to, to the works of the law, to the self-effort, to what a man can do for himself or even for God, you know, but that's not good enough. And that's the dilemma of the Roman seven men um, who, when he's got great uh, look, have that book on that one if you ever get a chance. Who is the Roman seven man? And um, so uh, uh, with that little introduction about Abraham and Sarah, I'd like to also start with a little testimony about how I ran into this glorious revelation um, that is that is so brilliantly um, laid out in the book of Romans, which is the ABC of our faith, of what we believe is the core of the Christian teachings and doctrine. It's a very, very foundational. <clears throat> so we'll be laying somewhat of a foundation and I want to make sure that we're laying it, we're laying it on the foundation stone of Christ Jesus himself and what he has accomplished for our salvation. Um, some people um, classify what we, theologically speaking, you know, would probably classify what we're speaking uh, in the category of participa participationist. You know, there's, uh, there's several streams of theology, and we would probably fit in that category of uh, participation. So what they mean by that is we uh, explain what had happened to us and, and believe what had happened to us as participating in the death of Christ mm -hmm. and participating in uh, the, the, the crucifixion, the burial and the resurrection. So they say that we would we explain the the glory of, of the cross and how it relates to us as believers in a way per, uh, in a way that we have participated. Others don't quite see it that way. They see they see the work of redemption on the cross um, as God mainly reconciliation, reconciling man to himself. So that's how they see the theme of God's salvation, basically God reconciled himself, which is totally true and 100%. We agree and we function in that reconciliation ministry. You know, most currently we are ministering Israel and Palestinians and both Christians, Arabs uh, and Muslims alike, we're ministering in that power of, of reconciliation. We have tremendous authority and power of reconciliation. Because God has reconciled Himself with us, He made us from enemies into friends, and so we flow in that reconciliation spirit. Where as ambassadors, ministers of reconciliation, you know, so totally into we totally into that view, you know, of what can explain that what is see God's salvation that way. Uh, the others are the justification, which is kind of the Luther's Martin Luther's view. Um, of God justifying, so they see the entire book of Romans more in a in, in in sense of the justification, which is totally true right there. But I would say they would, uh, they would say that we're focused more in a, in a participatory uh, kind of a way of salvation, which means that we believe that, that Christ actually included us in his death on the cross and include us in his grave and include us in his resurrection. That view, however, is somewhat uh, difficult for natural mind to grasp. How could I have been included into something before me was me, you know, before I was there? Like I, I, was, I was not born 2,000 years ago for Christ to include me, you know. So men or women or whatever, humans with, with natural thinking you cannot quite grasp that point of view. So they that's how they kinda of classify us a little like no they're the participationist, you know, they kinda of believe these unusual things, these strange things, you know. Um, or uh, they might call, call classify us as a mystical uh, as mystics, you know, people who believe this you know, kinda of mystically, you know. And 
And I had trouble with that word, mystical, mysticism, mystical, um, for a long time. Never, never used it, never knew that much about it, and it was kind of a strange thing for me. So I never used that. Recently, we're hearing that word uh, beginning to be used more and more and more, you know. And I'm beginning to like it because, hey, it's kind of one way of saying it without, you know, what are you going to do? It just, you want to say it mystical? You want to say it, I like to say it supernatural because it is supernatural. So, but but if, if, if the word mystical, uh, mysticism uh, is beginning to be acceptable by Christians, that's fine with me. I, I like it, you know. And it is, it is very, very, in my, in my world, everything is very supernatural. I am born again supernatural. I was born and raised naturally communist. I was trained by the 80s communists. And uh, they programmed our minds, you could call it brainwashed. And so, um, somehow, supernaturally, I made my way here without you know, I escaped through that curtain. So it was a very, very, uh, very difficult thing. Uh, lit literally impossible. People get killed all over the Iron Curtain years ago when they were trying to escape. I made it through in a very incredible way, you know, and I don't, it's not like I'm an expert. There's no book to read how to escape, seven ways of escaping. It's like, you just, you just, just, just all of a sudden, I, I just went crazy. I wanted to be free. I mean, it's like, I don't know how to say it. But then I just went crazy because anybody's trying to escape their our curtain is either crazy or insane or, or suicidal or <laughs> super, super, super lucky. Because you know, it's like, how do you explain, you know, you know, how do you go through this? This is very, very <coughs> difficult, you know. But somehow, I developed this passion for freedom. Just all of a sudden, I got to get out of here. And now I'll look back. I see how God called me out and he provided these angels to get me across, you know. It was actually a black market, black market people. <laughs> Polish black market angels, you know. I don't know. And, but somehow I made it through. And one way ticket, uh, I was helped by the immigration. Uh, the Embassy of America accepted me when they found a high escape. Immediately accepted. The rest of the country didn't, didn't like it, but Americans liked it the way I escaped. So they said, "Hey, we like you. Come." So they got me really quickly the, the papers, and I made it to America. And within a year, I met Christians, and I couldn't figure out what was happening. I wasn't particularly feeling particularly freer, you know, inside. Although I'm in a free place, but in, internally, I wasn't much freer than back then. In fact, now it's kind of more upsetting because I should feel free. But yet, I realize even in the freest country in the world, I still don't necessarily feel free. And then I was even doubting, what have I done? Because I can't go back to a, a family that everything to, for the pursuit of this freedom, but I don't get it now, so I don't know what to do. I did, I did, I did wonder what have I done, you know? And right at that point, Low, real low point. A year after arriving in America, I met Christians, Christian young people witnessing, which is like, Danny look at their face. Hi, ah, Jesus loves you. You know, he really does. He died for you. Like, what are you on? You know, it's like I. It was like that movement among the hippies back in the sex, 60s to 70s. That's why I got cut in that tail end of that movement. Because it's called the Jesus movement, the Jesus people, whatever. The revival among young people, particularly in uh, California, started and then went in different states. But it was time people go out at night just witnessing. It's like time was stopped. It was, it was the thing to do every night to go out and just witness, talk about Jesus, and just spending hours and end discussions on the streets and every parks. And it was a, it was a, it was a movement like that, you know. And I got caught. And they loved that, they were talking to me. They realized I was speaking English, so they got me in, uh, in the house. Food, food really helps, you know, so I, food kept me going then. Free dinners every night kept me coming and coming, and finally, finally after two months, I, I says, 
Bye.